aviation cadets. A short while ago, they too were average American boys from average American families. In the near future, they will have learned many things. How to pilot a plane, how to navigate, or how to operate a bomb site. If you're 17, you can enlist in the Air Corps Reserve. You'll be called to training soon after your 18th birthday. Men between the ages of 18 and 26 can go into training immediately. There are things to do and places to go, and the Army Air Forces will supply both to healthy, adventurous, and patriotic young men with a will to smack the enemy where it hurts the most. Stop on your way out at the box office of this theater for complete information, or inquire at number 607 Custom House, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Write that number down, boys. 607 Custom House, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. By early 1945, Hitler's Third Reich was entering its death throes. In the West, Allied forces had pushed to within striking distance of the Rhine. In the East, the Red Army was crossing the Polish border into Germany. As the Allies battled their way towards Berlin from east and west, the Germans fought them all the way. But it was a hopeless task. By May 1945, Hitler would be dead and Germany finally defeated. Meanwhile, far to the south, in Italy, the German front was also starting to collapse. The German forces were dug in across the Apennine Mountains. Field Marshal Sir Harold Alexander, the Allied commander in the Mediterranean, now launched a spring offensive. On April the 9th, 1945, British troops attacked pulling German forces in from along the front. Five days later, US troops also moved forward and swiftly reached the south bank of the River Po. The Germans retreated to the north bank. But Hitler's commander in Italy, General Heinrich von Wietinghoff, had no illusions that he could hold back the Allied advance for long. So he now made approaches to the Allies and on April the 29th surrendered unconditionally. It would take effect from May the 2nd, 1945. This was the first formal surrender of German forces anywhere in Europe. A radio broadcast by the BBC correspondent Richard Dimbleby gave the horrific details. I passed through the barrier and found myself in the world of a nightmare. The living lay with their heads against the corpses, and around them moved the awful ghostly procession of emaciated, aimless people, with nothing to do and no hope of life, unable to move out of your way unable to look at the terrible sights around them. It was as though they were waiting their turn. This is what the Germans did. Let there be no mistake about it, did deliberately and slowly. 